one. Now, the ball motion will be partly controlled by on touchdown, which is the mouse click on desktop. Two. The on touchdown can be received by any widget as well as the root. If a ball and wall classes are modified as such, we can't see what are the printouts. 3. After clicking, the coordinates are passed to each widget. The widget must check the coordinates, so it may detect if that particular widget was clicked. 4. This is shown here. Usually the function collide point is used to check if a point actually belongs to the widget. Now, if you run the program, and you click on one of the four walls, you will receive a printout, and not if you click anywhere else. 5. There was a star symbol for touch.pos. This will force Python to make the arguments a tuple, as can be seen by this example. This allows passing of many values into a function. The star symbol is used throughout KV and Python in general. 6. This figure shows what is the direction of the ball after a touch or click. The vector goes from ball center to the touch position. If you are at midpoint between the balls, you will be guaranteed a collision. 7. The onTouchDown function is in the root class. First the touch vector is found as the difference between two points. Now, we explicitly calculate the unity vector, which has a magnitude of 1. It is multiplied by 5.0, which remains constant for all collisions. This means there is always constant speed. 8. The first part of the update function is changed, where ball-wall collisions are detected. This is because sometimes we have oscillatory behavior when the ball is almost parallel to one of the edges and makes two contacts in two consecutive frames. To avoid this, we always force the ball to go away from the wall. This change is necessary due to the many new angles for the velocity now possible. 9. You can find additional information including the source code at pythonmobile.blogspot.com.